Defending the President Part 2 Defending Against the Hard Left For those in the hard left displeased with the lack of progress from the Obama administration blame the GOP and constitutional requirements. Before I support this position I need to show how I define the term progressive. Using the poli sci model of the political spectrum you can see how I place progressive to the left of moderate. During his run for office, it was readily obvious to me that Obama was more of a moderate than a progressive because his positions matched my moderate views so well. I think some believed Obama was more of a progressive because during the campaign he spoke out so strongly on certain issues such as the rendition and torture policy of President Bush that everyone on the left found so outrageous. You know, if someone only saw my videos where my views are shared with more progressive types, then it's understandable that that person would probably assume that I was more of a progressive than I am. So Obama has not changed his political stripes. He was always a moderate. He has not sold out, nor has he been co-opted by some nefarious power, as some people claim. As for the lack of legislative progress by this administration, remember, to pass legislation in Congress, the Constitution requires at minimum a 60% affirmative vote from both houses of Congress. This means 261 votes in the House and 60 in the Senate. President Obama's first two years coincided with the 111th Congress. The peak number of Democrats in the House was 258, three shy of 60%, while in the Senate the peak was 58, two shy of 60%. During this period, for any bill to have passed in the Senate, every Democratic senator plus both independents, Sanders and Lieberman, needed to be on board. And this is not a slam dunk. And this best of time situation lasted only 103 days minus holiday recess periods. This is, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas time. Pressing economic concerns and the health care reform debates ate up most of this time period. The remainder of this first two-year period, anywhere from one to five GOP votes were needed to be picked up in the Senate in order to pass legislation. To pick up these additional votes, Compromise was unavoidable. Bills need to be watered down, otherwise you don't get the votes and you get a whole lot of nothing. This just happens in Congress when you don't have an absolute majority under constitutional rules. Not having 60 votes in the Senate was not a lame excuse for not passing needed legislation, but a valid excuse. A minimum of 60 votes is what the Constitution requires period. No two ways about it. Now, you can't expect the president to bypass the Constitution, nor to be able to control the minds of those in Congress. And now, with the Tea Party appeasing GOP dominated in the House, it is all but impossible to get anything through their legislative roadblock. If you need someone to blame, blame the GOP for they have rejected the give and take of democracy in favor of our way or no way. Now the willful friendly fire criticism of the president coming from the hard left has not been helpful. It only added to the chorus of voices screaming about how terrible the president and the Democrats supposedly were, helping bring about the big GOP gains in 2010. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.